What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about whether or not you should take your children to Six Flags. <music> Before we get started, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, turn on the notification bells for the daily uploads, and go ahead and hit that like button as it helps the channel grow. Without any further ado, let's get straight into the video. One of the most common questions that I get on social media is, why am I taking the baby to Six Flags? Why am I taking my son to Six Flags? He's just a year old. He's not going to remember it. How much fun can you actually have at Six Flags with him? He can't ride roller coasters. And it's something that a lot of parents try to, you know, talk about themselves. Oh, well, let's go to Six Flags. No, that's fun for us, but really not much fun for the kid. And everybody's kind of been up in the air whether or not they should take their children to Six Flags. So we're going to cover um, just about one of the things, a lot of the things that you should look at when you're planning a trip to Six Flags and you're talking about your little one. Um, one of the things that people talk about the most is the rides for the little ones. Um, Six Flags is very good, particularly Six Flags Over Texas, which is the park we'll be covering in the video. Um, Six Flags Over Texas has height requirements on every single one of their rides, uh, regardless if they're kid rides or not. Um, there are some children's rides um, that are contradicting. Uh, for example, the teacup ride uh, over in Mexico, uh, right next to the Mexican restaurant. Uh, over there by Love of Laura, um, any child can ride that's below 36 inches, but they must be accompanied by an adult, uh, which is most of the rides there. Um, but the teacups in Bugs Bunny Boomtown, you have to be 36 inches to ride, and there's, um, but there are a lot of rides for little babies and infants and stuff like that. If you have small children, uh, like I do, that's anywhere from infant being born to toddler stage um, then there's going to be quite a few rides there for them uh, depending on what your you know what kind of rides they're into what kind of rides you feel like they would like um, i would recommend trying a lot of them um, the first thing we want to talk about is the speedy gonzalez the truck ride there uh, there for any age you can ride with them uh, you can ride that ride as long as they can hold their head up. If they can support their own head and sit up on their own, then you're going to be fine riding that. Uh, moving along to Bugs Bunny Boomtown, um, there's the teacups there. They cannot ride if you're unless your child is 36 inches. Um, the Ferris wheel can be accompanied by an adult if you're under 36 inches, so anybody can ride. Adults cannot ride it unless they are accompanied by a child. Uh, then there's the Wiley Coyote Kitty Coaster there. Uh, you have to be 36 inches tall to be accompanied by an adult to ride it. Um, and then there's the drop tower, Bugs Bunny cloud dropper or whatever it is. Um, like I said, you have to be able, they have to be able to support, sit up on their own and uh, pretty much support that. Uh, and you'll have to ride with them. Um, there's the Marvin Martian ride, which is actually under uh, manufacturer fixing it right now they're kind of giving it a makeover um then there's the tasmanian devil swings uh any child can ride as long as they can hold their head up um daffy ducks uh bucket ride have to be 36 inches with an adult um and that's pretty much all in bugs bunny boomtown uh, as you start maneuvering around the park you'll start to see rides here or there there's the gunslinger by mini mine train uh, they can't ride unless they're 36 inches tall. Uh, Mini Mine Train cannot ride unless you're 36 inches tall. Um, as we move into the Gotham area, as soon as you cross the train tracks, officially coming into Gotham, you'll turn to the right and you'll see the balloons uh, there. They're kind of like a spinning balloons. They're kind of off by themselves. It's uh, You can see the Aquaman power wave from there uh, when you're up in the air on those. Um, it's not really all that high. Um, so I wouldn't really worry if you have a child that has a fear of heights or whatever, then, you know, you can ride it with them, you know, just, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, it just pretty much, it's like a, it's like a sitting on a plane, like one of the airplane rides, 
except it just it just spins around and the cars you're sitting in you can spin those too um but it's a pretty fun ride and doesn't get a lot of attention um so there's that <clears throat> um obviously they cannot ride judge roy stream or texas sky screamer that's the only other two rides that are remotely close to that <clears throat> going into gotham there's one ride in gotham that children can ride um the batwing has a no height requirement on it you can ride it uh, with your child uh, the child will have to be on the inside of the ride you'll have to be on the outside uh, you'll put a seat belt on and pretty much call it um, pretty fun ride a lot of kids usually love that ride because uh, all it does is you're sitting in an airplane and you're just going around in a circle type of thing uh, over there in Gotham, you've got Mr. Freeze, Batman the Ride, Harley Quinn, Catwoman Whip, uh, the Joker SNS Free Spin. Uh, the children cannot ride that ride. Um, they have extensive height requirements of at least 48 inches. Um, so unless you have an adolescent, you're not going to be able to ride that ride. And even if they could ride that ride, you wouldn't want you wouldn't want them to ride that ride by themselves anyway. So uh, moving out of Gotham, we'll start making our way past. Uh, over to the Texas Giant area um, where Texas Giant is located. There are two rides over there, th three technically, that they can ride. There is um, Boot Scootin'. It's just a, a big red boot that just goes in a circle and bounces up and down. It's really cool for kids. Um, and then the most famous kid ride in the park is the Antique Cars. Um, and pretty much you can sit the kid in your lap and drive a little antique car or let them steer while you do that and you know, just go around the park um uh, all kids love that ride especially with parents they always love to do stuff like that um and then there's the train ride uh train is operational so uh you can take your children on the train set them in your lap or set them next to you whatever you want to do but every every kid wants to ride a train everybody's fond of trains as children so I'd recommend taking them on that a couple of times if you want. Uh, you can actually ride the train around the entire park. So you can drop your stroller off. Let's say you want to get on it at Texas Giant. You can drop your stroller off there. Then you'll go over by Gotham. You'll stop there for a minute. They'll pick up more passengers. And then they'll go back to the Texas Giant station where you can get off the train and retrieve your stroller and stuff like that. Um, so that's pretty cool for them. Um, other options and rides there's quite a few rides uh for children if you know you're like me and megan when we take asher to go over there uh <clears throat> we do a lot of rides with him and like a uh, holiday in the park was going on over there by shockwave they've got uh they had the frosty snow hill we did that several times with him he enjoyed it um if you have a child that's tall enough there's the go-karts um I do believe if the child is under 48 inches or 42 inches, they can't drive. You have to drive, but they can sit in the passenger seat with the seat belt on. Um, Shockwave has a height requirement. Um, I really don't know why that ride has a height requirement um, over 36 inches. Um, I think it's 42 inches, uh, but that ride's really not all that bad. Um, there's the Sidewinder in between texas giant and titan it's kind of like the scrambler it's pretty much the scrambler same thing um so adolescents should have a pretty good time riding that um i always enjoyed uh, scrambler when i was that age so i'm pretty sure your children will probably enjoy it uh we plan on taking asher when he gets old enough to get on that thing because he loves stuff that goes fast and he loves things that goes up high uh this boy is not afraid of heights at all none whatsoever we've done drop towers and ferris wheels and everything that's went up high and this this kid is not afraid of heights uh, another thing that is not open right now but you should think about if you're going in the summertime the log flume uh, the log ride you can take your children your infants and your toddlers on the log ride uh, but like i said they have to be able to support their own weight have to be able to sit up on their own uh, what we did with asher is we put him in a baby carrier uh, we sat him in the baby carrier and we got in line for the log flume and we got on the ride and we sat down um, It's a single file line. So uh, we sat in front and She sat behind me and that's how we rode 
um, it was safer for him. And if not, then if the ride attendant won't allow you to do that, then you can just simply set him in your lap and just put your arm around him or set him in front of you and just put your arm around him. Yeah, it's <clears throat> the log ride's a really safe ride. There's just one drop on the ride and it's really not all that big. It's like a 20, 25 foot drop uh, where they take your picture. So not all that scary. Um, Asher was, he had just turned a year old when we took him there and he loved the shit out of it. Uh, but of course he's got my blood in him, so he's going to. Um, but yeah, there is a lot of rides at Six Flags Over Texas that are for children. Um, they do have a play area. It's closed now due to the pandemic. Hopefully we'll be making a transition into an endemic here shortly. So that stuff over there in Bugs Bunny Boomtown will start to open up a little bit more. And you'll see a lot more kids over there playing and having fun. It's kind of like a jungle gym, jungle gym at a park or something. Um, so that's really, really fun for kids. Uh, another thing that stick out that a lot, not a lot of people talk about and you don't really know about is the character interactions with children. Um, <clears throat> right now we have uh, Looney Tune characters walking around the park. Um, when we were at Holiday in a Park, they were in the Mystic Acres Trail. Um, but definitely something to check out. A lot of kids that watch cartoons and they see their cart, they see those cartoon characters on them and they like it. Some people like Sylvester and Tweety, other people just like Bugs Bunny. Uh, giving them that opportunity to see that in person, I think, will really, really makes for a good encounter for them. Um, I'm thinking as we're assuming they're going to keep that Mystic Acres trails open and they'll probably just theme it to like springtime or winter time, or they might just call it Mystic Acres trail. And that's probably where they're going to have the character interactions. Uh, like I said, Asher, he went like, we were there for three days and he met Daffy Duck. He met Bugs Bunny. He met Tweety Bird. He met Sylvester. And I mean, he, he loved it. Every time we go over there, he always enjoys it and loves it over there. So it's just something to greatly think about. Um, if you have smaller children that are in the infant toddler stage, if you're worried about food and stuff like that, a lot of people don't want to do these, uh, sit outside type of things because they want to sit their child in a high chair. And that's another thing that we, we were looking at is like, well, some of these restaurants don't have high chairs, you know, how are we going to, you know, we don't really want to leave them in the stroller. You know, we want to get out and let them eat in a high chair, you know, eat at the table with us type of thing and johnny rockets at right across from the batwing in gotham uh, they have high chairs there uh, a lot of the restaurants that are actually inside that you will sit down at like uh american all american cafe uh right across from aquaman and diagonally from uh, bugs money boomtown um, they have high chairs in there as well so you can sit down with your child and put them in a high chair and eat um if you have an accident um, and you need to clean up, um, a lot of the bathrooms, both male and female, have changing tables. There are some of the smaller bathrooms. Uh, FYI, the, the giant bathrooms, the ones over there by the entrance by Texas Giant, there is only, there's not changing tables in those bathrooms. Um, so if you have a blowout or something like that with your child and you need to have an emergency changing session, um, I would recommend trying some of the larger bathrooms because they have the changing tables. The bathrooms, uh, before the entrance of the park has changing tables in both male and female bathrooms. Um, so there's a lot. I wouldn't recommend, um, changing the child outside i've done it you know when i couldn't find a bathroom quick enough and he was he freaking had a blowout and had shit going up his back you know I, I i didn't really care you know it was just like trying to get him out of that and get him into something comfortable before he got a diaper rash or whatever so i just went ahead and laid the stroller down reclined it and just fucking we changed him right there we didn't give a fuck uh, but not everybody's like me uh, so if you're one of those types of parents that you have to change your kid in the bathroom, then there's definitely a lot of bathrooms there to be able to do so. Um, but there's also a lot of places that you can, you know, little corners that you can go if you can't make it to a bathroom in time type of thing. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, the overall experience for children at Six Flags Over Texas are, is, is very, very good. Uh, Asher, we've taken my son to Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. We've taken him to SeaWorld in San Antonio. We've taken him to Magic Springs uh, here in Arkansas. 
and we've taken them to Six Flags over Texas. We've returned to Six Flags over Texas more than we had any other park. And that's because that's the park where he has the most fun at, where he's able to have the most fun. Um, Six Flags over Texas is the best park in the chain in this area, in the south, for children wanting to have fun because they can ride the rides, they can do a lot of things, they can ride the train, they can interact with characters. Uh, there's games that they can play. Um, I think I paid like 10 bucks for one of the water shooting games and he would get a small, you know, uh, what's that? He would get a small prize afterwards. So I just had somebody next to me and I shot the gun and he won, but he was playing by himself, but he still won. But it's just the experience behind it that they're looking for playing the game, receiving a prize type of thing. So a lot of those people, if you tell them, Hey, I want to win something for my baby or I want something for the kid, you know, there's nobody around, you know, and they'll say, Oh, well you have to pay for two times. Then just, it's just easier to just go ahead and pay the, and it's, it's just ten dollars if you're going to play the game twice anyway and if you play it once and lose you're not going to get anything but if you play against yourself and you pay ten dollars you're going to instantly get a prize anyway so they're going to enjoy that so i would be very very aware of which games you play at over texas though because some of those games a lot of those games are rigged to to lose uh the games that i would probably try to stick to with your children um are like the racing games with the water guns uh those seem to be pretty fun and they're not a whole lot of skill based in it um the plastic rings on the glass bottles i would stay away from those um, those are pretty much that's a pretty high skill game the ladder uh, like i said it's all about balance and depending on your child most children really really have a lot of problems with balance so unless you've got like a middle-aged adolescent that's or preteen or something like that it's going to be into that area where you feel like they would do really good on it i would stay away from that um, a lot of the games that have these really really big stuffed animals all you have to do is just put this ball in there and it's you're going to waste your money on it just just save your money and just stick to the straightforward straight out in front of you games like those those racing water gun games they're, they're really straightforward you aim the water gun, you shoot where it says shoot here, and then you just look at it and don't move, okay? And you can even take control of it, put your kid's hand on it, and whatever. Um, and they'll get a prize every time. Um, there'll be other games that kids can play that where it says kids win a prize every time. I'd recommend just staying with those uh, because your kid's going to feel accomplished. He's going to get something, so and it'll be a lot more enjoyable for them as well. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that uh, we really had fun doing while we were there. Um, the carousel. Yeah, the carousel. There's a carousel it's called the Grand Carousel as soon as you walk in the park. Um, definitely do that. Um, Asher loves riding on the horses, but he likes just sitting there and just chilling in one of the sleighs more than anything. Uh, when he gets tired, we go there and we ride the carousel a couple of times and he'll get there and he'll be he'll damn near fall asleep sitting there because it's just, just relaxing for him um so i'd recommend doing that and like i said earlier in the video uh, riding the train is definitely beneficial should you take your kid to six flags is it definitely worth the money i think it's worth the money uh, i think it's definitely worth going uh, because every time we go i go and i'm gonna have fun either way whether if i go by myself or if it's just me and megan or if it's all three of us we're gonna have fun either way because the park is just so much fun uh fiesta texas however we'll cover that in a different video uh we're not going to cover that in this video um but fiesta texas is a completely different story uh when it comes to children um but yeah should you take your kids to six flags i completely think you should i think taking them there for an experience if you're between the ages of zero and let's just say about four, five years old, and you're trying to find a good amusement park to take them to, Six Flags isn't a bad choice, you know, because it'll be an easy way to wear them down. Because that's what we do. We let them run around, and we ride this, and we ride that, and we ride this, and ride that. And I guarantee you, by the end of the day, we get him in his bed, he is gone. He is asleep. There's no fighting sleep, no nothing. He's just so wired and so excited. He has a lot of fun. And then when it's time to go to bed, he crashes out. So it's kind of a win-win. You know, you want to find a way to wear your kid down, take him to Six Flags or wear yourself down too. I guarantee you by the end of the night, you'll get some good sleep and so will they. 
Well, all right, man, that's going to cover this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And like I said earlier, if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And we will catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right.